welcome back to Indianomics. So uh, we've been discussing the issues of rising US inflation and the deflationary force in China. To discuss how Indian yields will move and the Indian currency, I have with me uh, the head of uh, global EM and APAC research at Deutsche Bank, Samir Goyal. Samir, thank you very much indeed for joining us. Let me start with the US. Uh, uh, we saw those US CPI uh, and PPI numbers coming in higher uh, and uh, <clears throat> the yields rising. What is your estimate of uh, the way the Fed will move and the way U.S. yields might move? So, Lata, uh, obviously the inflation numbers last week in the U.S., both the consumer price and the producer price numbers were higher than expected. And I think not just about, uh, it's just not about the numbers being higher. I think they very seriously call into question the idea whether uh, we have seen the best part of the disinflation process already over with the U.S. and whether... And similar to the concerns with a lot of the Fed speakers have been uh, voicing, uh, is it that there is a big last mile issue uh, on inflation in the U.S. and uh, how quickly they can get confident about being able to get to their target sustainably for inflation at around 2%. Uh, now, I think in terms of numbers, what these uh, prints from last week do is only marginally impacted our own forecast for core PCE uh, in the U.S. probably being still at uh, moving uh, down to about 2.3% by the end of this year, and which should be largely in line with allowing the Fed to be able to start to cut rates by the middle of the year. Uh, but it does raise issues about whether uh, and how quickly and how closely we need to watch the inflation trajectory in the US uh, to be able to get the timing and the scale, the quantum of that easing through. The markets have already pulled back on their expectations of the uh, Fed cuts pretty substantially. At the start of this year, we were pricing in close to about 150, 160 basis points of cuts for 24. We are now pricing in less than 90 basis points. So I think the market narrative has very clearly moved closer to the Fed in terms of its concerns about how sustainable uh, this path of disinflation here is. Okay, but uh, for us uh, in India, the more important point is uh, the shadows cast by the 10-year bond yield on uh, Indian uh, bond yields. Now, uh, what is your estimate? There is also this fiscal angle being an election year. Uh, we could see a repeat of the first quarter, you know, the October, November, December fiscal deficit getting ext extrapolated, which, in which case the U.S. fiscal deficit could even go to 8%. So do you think, therefore, that the bond yield doesn't fall much, the 10-year Treasury yield? What's the range you're looking at? Yeah, so I think uh, the Treasury yields do feel like they are fairly well supported here, and especially uh, sort of north of 4%. Uh, I think there are several dynamics, of course, which go into Treasury yields. It's not just about the Fed view. It's also about the quarterly uh, refunding announcements which have come out, which seem like the worst of the duration supply is kind of past us, but obviously concerns around elections and about what that could potentially mean for uh, fiscal policy, though a lot of that is, I guess, more of 25 rather than an issue for 24 immediately. Uh, the Fed's also been expressing concerns around quantitative tightening and as to whether uh, they will necessarily continue with that uh, same pace. I think a lot of these dynamics come together to our mind to suggest that you will see a, a bit of a support here as far as Treasury yields are concerned. We still think uh, the curve will pull steepen. Right now, you're seeing the two-year, 10-year spread at being close to about minus 40. We think by the end of this year, we flip to about plus 40 basis points, but that's largely as the front end yields come down. I think the back end yields we feel around in the 420, 25 region uh, seem fairly well supported. There is even a risk that uh, if uh, the current uh, sort of trend of uh, you know good uh, data continues in the US, that we actually see the yields move up a little bit further before oh. to our mind settling by the end of the year at around this 415, 420 levels. Oh, really? Uh, you expect it to go even higher. In that case, where does that leave, uh, say, Indian bond yields? Uh, your own report, uh, I, I think I, my chat with you earlier, you had suggested that uh, yields could come down because of the uh, bond index inclusion. The uh, Indian uh, borrowing program is also lower than what uh, uh, the market was estimating. So what are your yield expectations on uh, the Indian tenure? And will that be spoilt by uh, the U.S. yields remaining very high? So I think uh, the U.S. yields are a factor to the extent of determining, if you might, the timing of how quickly uh, the yields can reprice, not just in India, but most of 
emerging markets. But I think ultimately the direction of travel is very clear. I think in the case of India in particular, we've always thought that the beta to US yields is relatively low compared with a lot of other emerging markets. India as an economy has proven to be a lot more insular to the volatility uh, in the global economic and uh, rate cycle. Uh, like you said, the longer term narrative around bond index inclusion, the fact that we are well on the path uh, for fiscal consolidation, and that's largely meant that the bond demand supply dynamics has become a lot more favorable uh, towards uh, for, for India into uh, FY25. Uh, obviously, our outlook on RBI, we still think uh, the Reserve Bank will be in a place to potentially change its stance uh, by April and maybe start cutting rates by June. We still think we'll probably get about 100 basis points of rate cuts oh. in fiscal uh, 25. I think a lot of that comes together uh, for us to remain relatively fairly constructive on Indian bond yields. Our targets been, uh, at least the first initial targets been to get to about 675. In that case, where does this leave the rupee? Uh, the Reserve Bank has held it in such a tight range, 83 to 83.3 is all, that it has moved despite all these vicissitudes. Uh, now will it rise? And the other point that some market guys point out is that uh, the Reserve Bank also has one eye on the CNY rupee exchange rate. So, can you also tell me whether the CNY will be allowed to depreciate simply because it looks like China wants to look at the export way out of its current slowdown? So, Lava, I think the way I look at the rupee, there is, and, and as you have also actually enunciated, I think there is multiple cross currents here uh, for the for the rupee. I think on the one hand, one very critical factor will be whether we actually see a more pronounced dollar down cycle happening, which at the moment seems very constrained by the fact the U.S. as an economy is clearly outperforming the rest of the, at least the developed world. I do think uh, versus emerging market currencies, the dollar will be more influenced by growth considerations than rate cycle considerations. But nonetheless, the dollar seems on, at least for now, a relatively uh, strong footing. For India itself, we are probably, the currency is not necessarily cheap uh, when you compare it to inflation differentials with India's trading partners or on basic balance front. But on the other hand, we do have potentially better flows coming up ahead, both in terms of whether they do into equity markets uh, at or following the elections, and certainly into fixed income uh, because of the index inclusion issues. The, I think the ultimately the deciding factor would be whether policy permits uh, those flows to come into the market or, or intermediate it. Uh, so whether is keen on keeping volatility very low or allowing that to translate into better appreciation and gains for uh, for the currency. Mm -hmm. I, I'm personally biased myself to think that the currency will probably towards the latter part of the year uh, be somewhat stronger mm. than where we are. But I think still very much contained within a within a range. No, no. I must get your view on uh, China. Uh, do you expect that uh, because of this, uh, you know, manufacture your way out of the current problem, China is actually uh, uh, capturing global market uh, uh, shares, even in cars, EVs, uh, lithium batteries, and they're cutting prices. They're seen as a deflationary force. Where is the CNY expected to go? Will it depreciate? And if it depreciates, is there a chance the rupee may depreciate rather than appreciate? So I think on the renminbi, uh, one point I would make is, I think what is often misunderstood is uh, that uh, while there is clearly benefits to a weaker currency, especially to one uh, which is quite as much of a manufacturing sector as China is, uh, there are definitely benefits to a weaker currency in terms of gaining more competitiveness, but there are also costs to a weaker currency, and particularly in terms of engendering an expectation cycle, which can actually cause uh, the depreciation to build on itself. And to that extent, for policymakers, there is a very clear cost-benefit analysis there. And they have thus far responded to what has been relatively negative news on the China economy and the China business cycle by uh, leaning back against, pushing back against any of that weakness in the currency. Oh. I think ultimately it's a policy choice to make uh, for them. But it's not clear to me that from a, a simply the benefits of gaining more competitiveness necessarily outweigh the cost to them of allowing sharp depreciation in the currency. Uh, to take so you're right that for the rupee, uh, the renminbi will be an important factor. But I think the cross is no longer at a level which it creates a huge amount of concern for uh, the Reserve Bank. Okay. You don't have a CNY level for range for the year? So our view is that if anything, if we see a positive uh, uh, momentum build up as you get a positive policy stimulus in China, there is, a, uh, there is very much a risk that 
the renminbi actually appreciates up oh. towards 7 so okay. not a very large amount okay. but a modest appreciation but very predicated on whether we see the kind of policy stimulus okay. which is required for growth to outperform uh, china okay. uh, in, in china in, at around the 5% level Thank you very much for joining us, uh, Samir Goyal. So the key takeaways, Indian yields are about to fall to about 6.75, but the rupee may be more ranged and maybe appreciate just a wee bit. That's it on this edition of Indianomics. Thanks much for watching.